Now we're going to look at the definition of unification and some mathematical basis of understanding the unification process. So in nutshell, unification is making terms equal by substitution. So substitution is the essential tool by which you do unification. A substitution is called a unifier of term T and U. If you apply the substitution on both the terms, you get the same term as an output. Okay? And term T and U are considered unifiable if there exists some unifier that can make them equal. Okay? Here's an example. Uh, consider the term Fx1 and X4. And uh, what we can do, we can map X1 to something and X4 to something such that um, they both the terms become equal. The one solution is X1 is mapped to C and uh, X4 is mapped to FC. Then both the term will become FC and then therefore they become equal. Here are other examples in which you can have x4 and fx1 in the same terms, but you can unify differently. Okay, so instead of saying c, I can use x2, a variable. It's up to me, my choice, how, how I want to unify things, okay? It somehow should work and it then both things should be equal. Uh, Sometimes you cannot unify them at all. For example, here, if you try to unify these two guys, you cannot unify them because the top symbols is different. Okay? So there's no way you can make them equal. Another example of not ability to unify is this example in which you have an X1, uh, you need to be mapped by Sigma and FX1 is mapped by Sigma. This X1 is within uh, this term. And so both term cannot be of equal size. If you just, just think a minute, and you have an x1 is replaced by another term and here x the same term will show up this term that term will be the subterm of this term how can they become equal ever so there is no way to find them okay. so this is the some basic ideas behind uh, substitution and unification now there's one more concept which is important uh, which is called more general substitution what is uh, the, the definition? If I give you two substitutions, I mean, it's not with respect to any specific term T and U, it's just it's a property of substitutions themselves, okay? If sigma 1 is more general than sigma 2, if there is a substitution, okay, there's a third substitution involved tau, such that if you compose sigma 1 with tau, it gives you sigma 2. So sigma 1 becomes more general and sigma 2 becomes more specific substitution, okay? So uh, look at these two. Uh, substitutions this maps x to f y z and this one maps to x to f c g z so that means that I, this is more general than this guy because what we can do we can take this guy and replace z by g of z okay and y by uh, c and then i get the same mapping right so but from here you cannot go back okay so therefore this is a greater than equal to sign Similarly, in this case, you have y, y, z is greater than equal to if you have z, z. Here you have made two variables equal. Okay? So I can just mapping y to z, I can get here. But once two variables became equal, I, there's no way I can substitute them and make them say, different letters. Okay? So therefore, one guy is bigger than another guy. Okay, so you can easily show that uh, this property is uh, transitive means if sigma in is 1 is greater than equal to sigma 2 and sigma 2 greater than equal to sigma 3 you can just say that sigma 1 greater than equal to sigma 3. Let's continue. Let's continue with this idea of more general unifier. So we can imagine a unifier which is bigger than everybody else. Is it possible? Yes, at least we can define it. So let's suppose I give you two terms T and U, okay? And uh, sigma be a unifier of T and U. So sigma is the most general unifier of term U and T if it is more general unifier than any other unifier between these two terms, okay? And this is not just a property of substitutions, it's a property of with respect to two given terms T and U, okay? Uh, one example will make it very clear. Let's suppose we have these two terms, right? So let, here I'm giving you three different unifiers. You can see that X can be matched to ZZ, uh, U can be matched to GY, and uh, Z maps to uh, same thing, and Y 
the same to same thing. It doesn't nothing changes. So this is one unifier, and there is another unifier, and all you can check out that they all work. Okay, but you can easily check that the sigma one is greater than or equal to sigma two. You can see this is more specific unifier because it has constants in it. Okay, and this guy has variables. So variables can take any value. Constant gets fixed, so therefore. um the constant cannot be substituted anymore okay so therefore it becomes more specific unifier the, this guy is less than sigma 1 again because it has made two variables equal okay yeah? so once you make two variables equal it be, you become more specific uh unifiers and then then the, this more general version okay so you cannot go back okay that's the idea and therefore this is called more general unifier An additional note to make is that these two guys are uncomparable. You cannot compare these two guys. Okay, and uh, so sigma one becomes the big guy, and the sigma two and sigma three are smaller unifiers. Now the question is: Is there is biggest or can I say the most general uh, unifier, or is that unique? Okay, there is exactly one of them, and uh, does it always exist? I mean, uh, all these question. Uh, remain to be answered so let's dive into it so let me define something called renaming a substitution is called renaming that all the mappings are from variable to variable and they is no, all one to one this is not the case that variable x and y map to the same variable z okay so they should always map to different variable it's not like it's not making two variables same so now let's uh, look at the theorem if i give you two substitutions Sigma one sub sigma two. They both are MGUs. Okay, they claim both are claiming to be MGUs of term U and T. Okay, then there is a renaming. Okay, tau such that sigma one tau equals to sigma two. So that is the claim. Yeah, so that makes it sigma one less than equal to sigma two. Uh, since it's, uh, uh, this is uh, one to one, so actually t tau inverse is also defined. Then also uh, sigma one also become greater than equal to become sigma two. Sigma one is MGU. Therefore, there is a substitution sigma one hat. So then, if we apply on it, uh, we get uh, sigma two. Okay. Similarly, since sigma two is also MGU, then we can apply sigma two hat on this guy, and we get sigma one. Okay, yeah. so therefore sigma one should be obtainable by applying these two substitution one after another. Okay, sigma one hat and sigma two hat. We can assume that that if a variable is not mapped by let's say uh, x sigma one sigma, it's not in the range of sigma one, then those variables will not show up here, right? Uh, for those variables, y sigma one hat is equal to y. Okay, it's good to check that why I'm saying so and where this is relevant. Okay, yeah. I will leave it for exercise. Okay, so uh, now let's see the uh, the claim here is uh, if you take any variable and y sigma one hat, then it gives you back a variable. Okay, yeah. so let's see how that is true. So consider x such that uh, y is in the uh, f of v sigma uh, x sigma one. Okay, so you take x, apply the sigma one, and then you get some variable appearing in y. Okay, the question is what is happening with the sigma one hat and sigma two hat? Okay, what these guys are doing, right? You you want to get back to sigma one, right? Okay, so there are three possibilities. Okay, what they are doing with this variable y sigma one hat does? Okay. Sigma one hat turned into a function. X sigma one sigma one hat becomes a longer term, and uh, so what happens is that when you apply sigma two hat, you cannot get back to uh, the same length because when you do substitution, you always get longer or remains the same. So the the this is not going to work out. So it has to map to some constant or a or a variable. Okay. So let's suppose it maps to a constant. If it maps to a constant, the sigma two hat will not be able to rename C back to Y. Yes, that's the problem. Okay, so it it cannot really uh, uh, it it will it will have a problem that uh, uh, that you went from Y to C 
and then you could not come back from C2I. So that, that creates a lot of trouble for you. So therefore, your only possibility left is that uh, sigma 1 hat is taking you to some variable. Okay. So sigma y sigma 1 hat is just variable mapping from variable to variables. Now what is left to show is the sigma uh, 1 hat is a renaming i.e. It, it maps variable to variables which are, we have already shown. So how do I say 1 to 1? Okay. So the, that's the statement. If I take two variables and we map them, they will give you the different output. Okay. So let's suppose they don't. They, they, they take you to the same place. Okay. So sigma 2 hat will not be able to rename the variables back to the distinct variables. You have a two different names y1 and y2. They were mapped to the same variable. Now you want to bring them, split them again because sigma 2 hat should bring sigma 1 back, which is not possible now. Okay. So therefore, you have a contradiction and they must be distinct. So sigma 1 hat is a renaming. The similar argument, sigma 2 hat is a renaming. And therefore, you can see that sigma 1 hat and sigma 2 hat both are renamings and therefore your theorem holds too.